The hunter asked, After leaving this body, how does one get another body for the purpose of experiencing pleasure and pain? What is the causal factor? And what are the cooperating causes? So the hunter is asking the sage how reincarnation works. And there's a traditional understanding that you get reborn according to your deeds in a previous life. Although this understanding has not been reinforced at all in the Yoga Vasishta. It usually happens just by what you happen to see at the last point in your life. That's what you get reborn as. But the traditional understanding says that your rebirth is dependent on your merits. Your merits are otherwise acquired from your previous life. Your mental conditioning, your latent tendencies, that's your vasana, and so on. But the Yoga Vasishta doesn't have much time for that understanding. The sage replied, Dharma, virtue, a dharma, that's the opposite of virtue, vasana, the latent tendencies or mental conditioning, the act of self and jiva, the act of self I suppose could be that part of you which has free will or which makes decisions, the volitional aspect. All these are synonyms which are notions with no corresponding reality. Consciousness entertains these notions in space, in the space or plane of consciousness. The self experiences the body notion because it is pure consciousness, totally independent of the body. This, this statement isn't telling us why the self experiences the body notion just why it is able to experience the body notion. So the self is able to experience the body notion because it is pure consciousness, totally independent of the body. It is only pure consciousness that is able to entertain any notion whatsoever. Why it should entertain any particular notion and this is like asking why we dream or why we dream of certain things. We don't go there in self-inquiry. That's the area of science. We can let science deal with these questions. All we are doing is describing what is happening. And what is happening is consciousness entertains notions. This is the function and nature of consciousness. And it identifies with these notions. And consciousness is totally independent of the body. Science will tell us otherwise. Well, some scientists might tell us otherwise. But given that the body is a notion, it properly, it properly belongs to the realm of consciousness and not the other way around, not consciousness belonging to the body. Though the body notion is unreal, it is experienced as if it were real, just like the dream object. This is what consciousness does. What it experiences is its reality. When you're awake, this is what is real. When you're in a dream, that is what is real. To the dead person, the other world, the hereafter, I think we can call that the hereafter, shines as a notion in his own consciousness. Because he sees this for some time, it is assumed to be real. The hereafter could be the next world or your next life or whatever, whatever consciousness experiences that appears to be real. And consciousness is the one thing that is going on all the time. There's no such thing as my consciousness. There is me in consciousness and that consciousness, that consciousness is going on. To what extent can we say that I am the person in my dreams. I might behave in my dreams completely differently to how I would behave in real life. And it's not because I'm allow myself to be uninhibited because it's a dream. That's nonsense. In dreams you can feel just as inhibited, if not more so, or embarrassed or repressed as you do in the waking state. There isn't any connection 
It's just one thing after the other. We could think of some kind of force going on, carrying like a ripple in the water. There's a flow going on of dream. But again, if you want to get into cause and effect, then you have to move into the scientific mode. All we're doing here is describing. So whatever you see over a period of time, it's assumed to be real. Because he sees this for some time, it is assumed to be real.